Welcome back to another Real Estate Note Show. I'm your host, Dave Putz from JKB Holdings. And today we're talking about collateral review. But before we get there, my co-partner, Mr. Nathan Turner. How are hello, you? Hello, hello. Doing well, doing well. How about you? Good, man. I hope you're getting this heat streak, man. This weather in Jersey, we're 96 today. Holy goodness. <laughs> it's a good day to sit inside and look at tapes of notes. That's for sure. We're we're on the opposite side of the country. And so here, 19 Celsius. So what's that? Maybe 70? Yeah. So you're cool, relaxed. Nice yeah. and cool. Everything's great. Oh, Very happy. Kids, to me, I had the kids stuck inside <clears throat> doing whatever they're doing on technology today and being that parent going, okay, right, just keep yourself busy. Stay out of trouble. All right. Don't no, go in I the went pool. for a run this morning. It was beautiful. Oh, Sunshine. Nice. Excellent. Nice. Yeah, we I did bike ride earlier just before it get too hot, right? Yeah. So before we get talking about today's topic and bring Dan on, how's the note business been for you? Been good. Been good. It takes a while to catch up after doing DME stuff. And yeah, that's a, it's a lot of preparation going on into it. And then some things just kind of get set, put to the side a little bit. And so catching up on a bunch of those things. And yeah, it's been good though. Yeah. Yeah. We had, I had a great call last couple of days. Uh, with some awesome people that uh, are either creating notes, learning to buy notes, and just kind of feeling it out. It's really interesting to hear from the spectrum of newbies to experience to those who are originating it and not understand the note buying world, which yeah. is really interesting um, where newbies may not realize that there's different states and different rules and all stuff. And then they don't realize that the note community is so small and they're realizing that we all know each other. Yeah, there's there is a lot to learn, and it, yes. I, that can seem overwhelming at first. Um, and so you can go one of two ways. You can well, three ways, I guess. You can just give up and say, "Nah, it's not for me." <clears throat> you can learn the rules and figure out how to do it, and then go ahead and do it. Or yeah. you can partner, partner with somebody. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so there's different ways you can approach it, but yeah. there's not really a right answer. I want to say, just keep doing what you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we I, I was talking to a, mm -hmm. a note creator today, and we were discussing the fact of creating a first and second and how that can really benefit him in selling the note um, yes. that listen, you don't got to sell, you know, hundred percent of a, you know, asset sell 70% by creating a first and second. It was really interesting how they never thought about that because they just sold it at a really good yield and they expect us to be able to buy it. And yeah. they didn't realize the other side of it of being, Hey, if we had to foreclose in this, where are we at in that process? Where's our thought process? Yeah. What if, what if, yes. and that it's a great strategy. I remember way back when, when uh, Corey, my old partner and I, we figured that one out and we went, wait a second, we could do a first and a second. Oh, that's brilliant. And, and yes, it is. It is brilliant. Yes. And we should do that. Yeah. So it's amazing that we all talk about this stuff and realize the fact that, that we got to network more. Every time I turn around speaking to people, we have a private call and we, I'm always learning and it's amazing years later, what we're learning is just amazing. In the note business, what have you been seeing recently in your portfolio? How are things going in that portfolio world? Are you seeing performing, BKs, defaults? What are you seeing recently? I have not seen a lot of defaults. Okay. Um, I have seen I have seen more tapes that are scratch and dent, which is interesting. So that, that starts to show some of the cracks uh, that are starting to come up. How about you? What are you seeing? Uh, last three months, we got four defaults. Uh, two just reinstated, thankfully. Um, okay. Another two are behind in BK. Little weird stuff going on. Um, and I was listening to someone we met over at DME that came for an interview with you guys. And I was listening to a, a show she did, and she was showing the fact that there's a lot of debt in the world and the fact that the banks are jumping on the second market and yeah. creating seconds and really stealing the equity, not stealing, but offering the, to give equity to people who have equity just so they can afford their bills. And the right. fact that the grocery is adding up, so they need to take out the second on the equity and kind of take money because they have no money in their in their bank account. And that part is scary to hear about. Yeah, that's really interesting. And that that's setting everybody up for a lot of yeah. you know hard times coming ahead. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. We were yeah. talking about her. I, I'd like to have her on the show at some point. Yeah, she's absolutely. Well, definitely. She's been yeah. Yeah. She's been from different from the high level to low level. And yeah. she was really interested in at the DME to see what our level's doing and talking and feeling and all that stuff. Um, she was amazed how many people were um, expecting the continuation of what's happened the last four or five years of yeah. things are smooth. Everything's great. It may not be as great as we thought it may Maybe. be. So real quick before we get our guest yeah. on. 
One of the things she was asking, and I had a really hard time with the question is, how big is the secondary mortgage market? Mm. And I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> hundreds of millions. I don't yeah. know. I, yeah, it's, absolutely. It's massive, but I, I, yep. I don't know. It's yeah. And we have to define what secondary is right outside the government agency, the Fannie yeah. and Freddie and stuff like that. And that a lot of it is in the hedge fund world, but there's a lot of people are level mm -hmm. uh, or one step above that are in there. So how I see on Facebook saying billions. Uh, I, yeah, probably. Yes. Yeah. It's nuts out there. So I totally agree with you guys that, you know, collaboration, understanding that there's a lot of opportunity out there coming about. And the fact that people are, are probably going to start over leveraging themselves similar to 05 and not because they want to, but because they can't afford their bills right now. And right. that's, that's different than in 05 back yes. then. I think it was more greed driven. Now yes. it's like just need driven. Yep. Yeah. So I, I, I'm hopeful that we can kind of be aware of that. Um, and, and stress that just because things look good now, don't expect that it will not go well in the future and don't buy notes or create notes with expectation and it's here to perform forever. Mm -hmm. um, this may trickle into a you know spot where the, that the property start losing value. We don't know if that's going to happen, but it could. And you have to be prepared for that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. And we've, we, you know, you and I, we've talked about this before. We're yeah. probably a little jaded. We're going to default everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Our first That's 10 years, okay. it is what it was. And I'm sure we'll go back to that. Right. Um, I'm sure we'll go back to faults. The cycles will continue. Yeah. Um, so just to remind everyone, we're actually switching. I'm switching over. Uh, our available assets are still available. We just add like 15 or so on there. Um, you know, and, and we'll be getting into our website. So it's not strictly on Google Sheets, but it will be available. So let us know if uh, you have any questions about that. We're just transitioning to that. Um, we will be kind of slowing out a little bit for our show for the summertime, just because summertime, right? And we're going to be doing some shows here and there, but I don't think we'll be doing bi-weekly, but that's okay, right? Kids and travel so, and all those things. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and just spending some time with everyone is the key here, right? So yeah. awesome. Well, without further ado, let's bring our friend, Mr. Dan Berm. How are you, man? Doing great. Doing great. Fresh out of court this morning. So uh, a much uh, friendlier audience. So I'm happy to be here. Oh, hey, yeah, I got I would say we're jealous, but there hey, you go. Yeah. There's the there swag right there. Nice. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So Dan, this world of collateral review, and we, we talked off air before, you know, I guess a month or so ago, and I was... Uh, you know, I always go into mindset that I don't know everything, um, but I felt pretty good about my understanding of collateral review. And I think the first thing you shot me and Nathan, we said, what? Wait, yeah. what? Like that's, and I was shocked and amazed of, I didn't know about that. Um, it seems sensible, but I think what you said was perfect was that, you know, you can play the defense attorney and know <laughs> this stuff and really get us in a bind and, and get us in a big thing. But before we dive into that, give us a little background of who you are. How did you sure. get involved in the creditor rights stuff and how you got to become an attorney? Yeah. So, um, well, how I got to become an attorney, um, I was a very uh, bored sales guy uh, for a plastics company. And uh, mm -hmm. I decided, you know, I, I wanted to kind of scratch the itch and go to law school. So six years after graduating, from undergrad, I uh, I don't know what I did right, but I got into Vanderbilt Law School. So I was a little bit late to law school, um, but uh, graduated in 2007, uh, took a job with a large firm in uh, Ohio. So I started my practice in Ohio. And uh, it was right around 2009 um, when the bottom started falling out of everything. Mm -hmm. And um, our law firm actually let go like 20 people. And it was a law firm that had been in existence since the 1800s and never laid off anybody. And they, wow. So there I was. And uh, so I was like, well, you know, I've been in sales for a long time. I could probably go out on my own. So I did. I went out on my own. Um, by happen chance, I got connected with a note investment fund who wanted me to cover some of their uh, summary judgment hearings in Ohio. And following that, they said, well, we like what you're doing. Will you take all of our Ohio work? So in 2012, I started my foreclosure practice focusing on Ohio uh, defaulted seconds. Um, so um, there was a lot of seconds in the marketplace around that. A lot mm -hmm. of large front funds were um, buying them up 
mm-hmm. uh, and then doing training or education sessions. And then sure. the students would then pick up the notes, learn to work them, and then they'd buy more notes. And so there was some low hanging fruit there. Yeah. Um, so I got into doing foreclosure work, sort of cutting my teeth on sort of the, the grimy, hairy, nasty uh, second mortgages. Not like some others, some folks who start doing the, uh, like the Fannie Mae loans, sort of yeah. the firsts in there, the, the collaterals mm-hmm. pristine. They just sort of stroll into court, like no, got no problem and they <laughs> foreclose. And so I had to kind of scrape and scratch through all the problems of collateral uh, to, to get to a foreclosure a lot of the time. So, um, but I found that I liked it. Um, it, it gave me an opportunity to sort of combine my business knowledge with uh, litigation. And, that's cool. And I got to help small business owners and investors in the process. So that's, that's sort of me in a nutshell. Yeah. Oh. And seconds are, are an interesting. Yeah. Well, they have set. always been because, because not all seconds are created alike, as you know. Right. Yeah. Some are, you know, some are fixed uh, interest rate notes. Some are adjustable. Um, some are HELOCs or mm-hmm. so you're trying to figure out sometimes whether the payments have been applied right you know have you calculated the right payoff amount you know yeah. a floating interest rate so those are some of the things that uh, that present themselves in that second marketplace and then a lot of people so then, chasing the seconds and just say oh they're real easy just yeah. they have great returns yeah there's a lot of gotchas yeah and then I, what took you to t- to tennessee after that yeah, yeah yeah good question so um several of my investor clients when I was in Ohio asked me, Hey, can you help me in Wisconsin? Can you help me in Minnesota? Can you help me in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. So I just started getting licensed in those jurisdictions as time went along. So I got licensed in seven jurisdictions now, and Tennessee is one of them. We came back to Tennessee, really more of a a lifestyle choice. It's funny. Tennessee is not really a hotbed of foreclosure, um, but the foreclosures that are done here are very easy and quick. Yeah. I, I guess it's sort of hard to say in your backyard, you wish there were more foreclosures to do. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, a lot of my work still is in Ohio, Illinois, Wisconsin, yeah. Massachusetts. But I get to do it from here in Tennessee, where we sort of created a home while I was in law school here. And then we just decided to move back because, nice. I mean, just like this, just like we're doing now. I mean, this is yeah. how I interact with my clients. Uh, yep. It's phone, it's Zoom, and increasingly courts too. So I really don't have to be in a particular place. It's just a good place to live. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's nice. Absolutely. So you got shift gears, you're in a space like that, and you really focus on being a credit attorney. Um, but there are times where you flip roles, right? You go on the debtor side. Sometimes, very rarely. Um, okay. If we have a client of the firm who is having a difficulty, I can think of one in particular where uh, a client and a friend here in Williamson County had some trouble with a builder who had a mortgage Uh um, on his property. And the builder, when he owned the property, he had a mortgage to a first mortgage. So there there were some difficulties there. And so I actually did sort of step in the role of the uh, the debtors counsel. Oh. It was really to unwind some procedural things mm-hmm. um, that uh, that the builders had uh, maybe still say some take some liberties. Uh, for instance, you should not try to sell a foreclosure uh, or a, a property of foreclosure in the wrong county. So that was one of the things. Um, hmm. But those those debtor side things are, are really few and far between. I do a lot yeah. of other non-foreclosure litigation though both on plaintiff side and defendant side so makes sense um that keeps me sharp in other ways so with that said have you guys seen an increase of defaults and foreclosures or decrease recently or be our bankruptcies or bankruptcies? yeah it's a it's a good question i think can i say feeling i'm i'm anticipating a wave maybe not a wave maybe a small wave uh, mm. not a tidal wave maybe the tide's coming in yeah um, some of the stuff you guys talked about already, um, people are borrowing money against their home on, you know, these pre-approved, you know, Hey, you're pre-approved for $40,000 to pay yeah. for your needs. And when that runs out and they're borrowing at these high rates, I think something is going to be on the horizon. We're not seeing it in sort of our incoming files yet. We are seeing more land contracts, contracts for deed, that are moving around in the marketplace, which uh, create some really interesting um, 
I wouldn't say challenges, just interesting pleadings, interesting title curative issues sometimes. I don't know if that answers your question, but it's, yeah. you know, are you 